splits and the U-boats prowling the Atlantic brought on food shortages in England. As part of the Lend-Lease Agreement, America started packing off shiploads of spam along with tanks and ammunition. Any kind of a meat dish, you would get spam in it. They wouldn't necessarily tell you that's what it was. A slang term for England during the war was spam land. When Americans went to war, spam went with them. Spam would do when no fresh meat could be gotten in, which for GIs on the front lines could be every day. Some guys were complaining that they were eating it basically three times a day. I mean, they, they called it, you know, a ham that didn't pass its physical, you know, meatloaf without basic training. I mean, there were a lot of jokes. In fact, the whole culture of Spam really was, was born during the war because it became much more than a foodstuff. After the spam-eating binge of World War II, you might have thought that Americans would swear off the stuff. So what happened next surprised everybody. For as many that complained, there were just as many, if not more, who were introduced to spam for the first time and who loved it. There is only one spam. And you can serve spam so many different ways. Cold or hot, spam hits the spot. Like most processed foods, Spam took a public relations beating after the 50s. But Spam, stubbornly stuffed in the same old can, has claimed a touch of retro hipness. In Seattle, it's the subject of a yearly sculpture contest run by a vegetarian named Ruby Montana. We're so grateful that everybody came, that everybody's here for the Burn Foundation. And judged by novelist Tom Robbins. In spite of our cultural pretensions, deep down inside, we still have a weakness for the way Spam curls up in a frying pan. Nowadays, I eat Spam once a year on my birthday. Every year on July 22nd, I take a can and I slice it very, very thin and I fry it until it's almost black. And then I put it on Wonder Bread with lots of mayonnaise. Maybe just a faint touch of mustard. And there's still one part of the world that's never lost its ravenous appetite for the pink stuff. Hawaii. There's supposedly three common characteristics of places where spam is very popular. One is extremes in temperature, usually a hot climate. One is native people that are really into pork dishes. And third is a former or current large U.S. military presence. Among the undisputed champs of Spam eating, Hawaiians. Spam caught on in the 1940s as a pork substitute. Today, it's most often eaten in bowls of ramen. Spam kebab, island style. Or as Spam sushi. The last word in American eats, what else but Spam?